The 308 is back, and it's nothing but bad news. Let's get started. What? An Italian car that's broken? Of course. You have one too, and just wait. Actually, no. you have two of them. No, 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 no. It'll be, fine. They'll be broken soon too, you just wait. Guess who's fixing them? Yes, I get stuck fixing them. This is a 1978 Ferrari 308 GTB. You guys have been seeing this thing on the channel quite a bit. There's multiple videos on it if you haven't been watching it and you want to get caught up. This was used in Car Trek. It was owned by Freddy or Tavares, and he sold it to me when Car Trek was over. I've gone through and fixed it all up. The interior is really nice. It used to be really trashed. Now it's really nice. It is not stock brand new but it is in very good condition. But I had the engine running, everything together. I sent it to Polk Performance to have it tuned, and unfortunately, he cannot. The ECU that's used to run this system is made by Electromotive, and I talked to several other tuners, and including Polk Performance, and they said that there's just no support for that anymore. It's so old. They're not even familiar with the software. I, I gave him the software and showed him everything, how it works, and he's like, I don't, I'm not familiar with this. I don't want to experiment on your Ferrari. So he also said, why don't you check out what happened to the company? So I did some research. Electromotive doesn't even exist anymore, bro. It's gone. It's like if you call them, it's just like, mac, mac, mac. there's nothing. I think this year or the end of last year, they just completely threw in the towel. It's like bulldozed, it's gone. So that means there will be no future support. That's probably not a good system to have on here. So there is a secret at the end of the video I'm going to reveal to you guys that's really, really cool. So here we are, the engine bay. When we sent this to Polk Performance, it had a small oil leak, but we decided just get it tuned. As soon as it comes back, we'll take care of the oil leak. But before I reveal the secret to you guys, what's going to happen to this car, we decided we probably should go ahead and fix the oil leak. It actually has some issues with the oil seals that were put on, which go around the cams, both the front and rear parts of the engine. Let's go ahead and show you guys what I'm talking about. So this is where the camshafts reside, and at either end there is a seal, just like this one, that just fits in the little hole, just like that. These seals were replaced at some point, but they're just not holding and they're continuing to leak. I told Daniel's son, get those things off. I want them in the trash. I want new ones put on. I'm not going to fight this leak anymore. He does have the cams off. As you can see, quite a bit of teardown had to be done to get the cams out because if you look up here, as you can see, this seal has already popped off but you can't even get it off. The actual cam gear is in the way, or the cog. So I had Danielson just remove all the cams so we can clean everything up, get all the silicone and things out, and go back together clean and fresh. We didn't do this any sooner because it hadn't ran enough to really do the leaks that it's doing. So we actually got it running, driving, we put quite a bit of hours on it, and started leaking out of those seals. But one thing that's really cool when we took all this apart, I mentioned to you guys several videos back on this car that it does not have stock camshafts. There have some strange, I mean, the name brand is not strange, but we can't find any information on the grind or the cam, and maybe you guys can help out there. Let me show you what we found. So here we have the camshafts. They're actually quite small. Mrs. Wizard commented on how little they are. But you can see there's a number here. I'll go through and read it to you. This kind of, if they're engraved in here, so it's hard to read. Y82N4048OC. Iski, as in the brand that makes camshaft, Iskandarian. Iski. OCUS77B. All of the camshafts have that information on them. At some point, these cams were removed, and they were, I don't know if they're the stock cams that have been modified, 
then they engraved that information on the cam or for just ISCII cams completely, like from the factory. I don't know. Maybe some of that information will give you guys some of the data you need or do some sleuthing and figure out what are the specs on this cam. Maybe you guys have heard of this before, but it is not the stock 308 camshafts. I'm hoping that this may be 20 more horsepower. That'd be amazing. Cams can make a lot of power. So by taking this all apart, we'll solve finally the last oil leak that this thing had. And you guys know when I first bought it, it had like 12 or 15 oil leaks. This is the last one, and once we get this fixed, it will have no more leaks of any kind. We also found out by doing this the numbers on these camshafts and how interesting it is. Maybe you guys got some information. Another thing when it arrived back, which is, this is no fault of Polk Performance, but we had installed a good used brake master cylinder. Let me go show you guys where that's at. The brakes are really strange on this car as far as the booster and the master cylinder. They're normally located on the firewall, which they are, but it's in the frunk or the trunk or whatever you want to call it. And not only that, it doesn't sit front to rear. It's sideways. Take a look. So as you can see, here's our booster, our reservoir, and below that is the actual master cylinder. It sits sideways on these to conserve space. There's a little box right here that converts the brake pedal travel to a sideways movement and makes all that work. When the car first arrived, or when I first bought it, it had no brakes at all, hardly at all. The master cylinder was bad. I tried to be cheap and got a good used one that was supposedly rebuilt off of eBay for a couple hundred bucks, and it did work for a little while, but as it set at Polk Performance, I guess it just finally kicked the bucket. It arrived back here at the shop with the brakes going to the floor. If you pump it really hard, really fast, it would catch and you would have brakes. That told me that there's no leaks or anything anywhere. The umbrella seals inside the master cylinder are shot. I finally broke down and said, I'm, I don't want to keep doing this. I went ahead and bought the new one with shipping, $700 just for this. That doesn't include the reservoir. It doesn't include anything, just the master cylinder, $700. I can get one of these guys for a, a Buick Lucerne or a Buick LeSabre or a Chevy truck for $40, $60, maybe $100. This was approaching a grand. It's really crazy, $700. So I'll set that here, and Danielson can change that out, and that will solve our brake issues once and for all. These cars, you just, you just can't be cheap on them. Some, well, I take that back. Sometimes you can. Just like on the alternator situation in a previous video, you can go watch and see that we converted it to a Chevy 10SI alternator on this 308, and it works perfect. Let's go take a peek at it. You can see that we slightly modified the mounting bracket. The original pulley bolted directly to the GM shaft, and it bolted perfectly. Even the spacing was perfect. And then we bolted the ear mount where the uh, tensioner goes, and it all works very well. That's a GM 10SI alternator. So no more $1,000 alternators. They're 50 bucks at CarQuest. So all the sensors and the injectors and everything that's on this engine will still be used. A lot of the things are actually General Motors, like the MAP sensor and some of the other sensors and things. They're just basic General Motors sensors. They're nothing fancy. You can see here that it has the Borla TWM throttle bodies. And there's just the standard injectors through there. I think there are like 14, I don't remember, NS, something like that, injectors. It has this turnbuckle that was purchased from Top End Performance that allows the original cable setup from the accelerator cable to operate this. All this stuff will stay on the car. So when I say we're gonna redo the system, we're not gonna pull all this stuff off. We're only gonna redo the controls. Let me show you where the original controls are here. You 
You can see down there, there's the Electromotive Tech 3R ECU. That, is, that little black box there is just a converter for the tachometer from Nick Forge's Ferrari. We'll be keeping that. We'll need that. But the computer down there is obsolete. No one wants to tune it. And there is now zero support. No downloads. No nothing you can get from the company. So it kind of stinks. That's kind of a backtrack. I was really making progress and I was thinking, oh, I'm going to drive this thing soon. But that's not the case, unfortunately. And just like I just showed with the ECM down there in the corner down there, I think that we'll just be able to cut the wiring there and splice it into the next unit and reuse all the wiring, all the sensors and everything. The fuel system will stay the same. The big secret that I want to reveal to you guys is that this car is going to Georgia. We're taking this thing to Jared. You're taking me to Jared's? No, no we're not getting diamond earrings. Ugh. No, not, not that Jared. Jared from Wrench Every Day, which is now called Questionable Garage. You guys watch, you probably watch his channel as well. If you don't, you should go over there. It's a very cool channel. I really enjoy interacting and talking with Jared. He's a really cool guy. He used to work for Speed for Sale, and he knows tuning. He also knows and agrees that this electromotive ECU needs to be tossed. He has some ideas and things that's going to be revealed on his channel. You'll have to check out the updates and things as they come along. But he will be soon coming by to pick up this entire car and taking it to North Georgia. And then from there, you guys can follow along on the updates and things that are happening to this car on the Questionable Garage. There's probably other options out there that I could send this to and get this done. But I trust Jared. I know that he knows what he's doing. He has proven it to you guys through his channel that he's not a dummy when it comes to cars. He's also not a dummy when it comes to tuning. He's also familiar with this car through Car Trek. So it's kind of weird that all this time that this car has been away from Car Trek, it's circling all the way back around, coming right back to him again. But this time, I'm the owner, and this time, it is in much, much better shape. By the time that Jared picks it up, we will have the brakes fixed, the oil leak fixed. It will be pretty much in pristine condition as far as operational ability. Not museum quality, but in operational ability. Some of you might wonder, well, why don't you take care of the tuning wizard? Well, number one, I don't have a dyno. It will require a dyno to tune this properly at the various RPM ranges. Power at this RPM, fuel at this RPM, at this load, and all these different things. I'm also not a speed shop. I don't have the, the software, and I'm not set up for it, and I've never been a tuner. I've not got into tuning. I'm a car wizard when it comes to fixing cars, not really much into modifying and doing things like that. He is. He knows that type of stuff, so that's definitely why it's going there to get that taken care of. Hopefully it's not there for too long, a couple months or so, and then it'll come back and I can cruise in it this summer in my 308. No, 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 not so fast there. Oh, no, you've got a Maserati Grand Sport now. You've got the Caddy and the Jag. And this. How many cars can you drive at one time? One. But I can own others also. So can I. Uh-huh. So that now this will be going away and we'll have some more time on our hands and not worrying about this. Once it goes away, we can finally get the jag -L off the lift. It is Chevelle, Jaguar, kind of a mix thing. That has a 6-liter Jaguar V12 in it, currently sitting in it, from J&J &J Auto Wrecking in Marshallville, Ohio. They supplied that engine. That project is not dead. It's just been up there for a long time. It'll be coming down. We'll get that going. That'll be a fun little project as well. Speaking of Jags, you guys might want an update on the XKR that's behind me. I've taken and put a good use cluster in it and it did not solve anything. It needed to be programmed and it was not happy. I've taken the original cluster and sent it to a buddy of mine. It's in Boca Raton, Florida. He is a guy who also does all kinds of repairs like modules and electrical repairs for the Bentley, Rolls Royce, Ferrari dealerships in Miami. The guy is a master electrician. I've sent many, many things to him and he has come through just about every time. So, 
I sent the cluster to him so he can figure out what the hell is going on with this thing. He'll get an answer. Now, whether or not it can be fixed, I don't know. But at least I'll know for sure exactly what is going on. He will know. So that's where that sits. It's waiting for that, to, for that answer to come forth. And it also still has 470,000 miles on it. The highest mile XKR in existence. Actually, guys, it's only 40,000 miles. But I don't know that we'll be able to fix the mileage issue. If we use the original cluster, I don't know if we'll be able to fix that or not. But at least we could get it operational again. So that's where we're at with the 308. Some sad news, but also some glad news. There'll be some collaboration with Jared. Maybe at some point when it's halfway through getting worked on, I can go down there and visit with him and we can do a video down there or something. If you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop to fix all kinds of cool cars, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss out on all the updates on 308. Thanks for watching.